Hi everyone. More graphing parabolas, I'm calling it two. When they're in this form, which is called the turning point form, which I'll look at y in a moment. Basics. If we let x equal zero, what do we get? We get the y in the set. So I'm going to get y equals zero, take three squared, and take the four. What do I end up with? Negative three when I square it is negative three times negative three. Be careful. It's a positive nine. So I end up with a nine take four, which is five. So I put in zero for x, and I got five for y. So that's called the y-intercept. So there it is over here on my diagram at five. Now if I let y equal zero, I'll go x minus three squared minus four equals zero. I put zero equals zero on the right, normal tradition for most things. So instead of putting the zero here, I'm putting it over on the right hand side. How do I get rid of a minus four? I add four to this side, I add four to that side, and I'm left with x minus three squared equals four. How do I get rid of a squared so I can get the x by itself? So I'm locking the x out of the bracket. If I take the square, if I get the square root of this side, I end up with x minus three. Then I've got to go to the square root of that side, which is two. The trouble is there are two possibilities. There's a positive and there's a negative. When you get rid of any square in any equation, any time, for example, let's say we had x squared equals 25, there's two answers. 5 times 5 will give me 25. Also, minus 5 times minus 5 is 25. So the two answers, there's a plus answer for 5, and there's a negative answer for 5. When I'm marking year 12 or year 11 students, over and over again, they will leave off the plus and the minus, and they'll only have one answer. Even though we expect parabolas to have up to two answers. So here we go. If I add 3 to this side, I add 3 to that side, I've got x equals... 2 plus 3 is 5, and the other answer is minus 2 plus 3, which is 1. So I have an x of 5 and a y of 0, and I have an x of 1 and a y of 0. So if I go over to my graph, I have a dot at 5, 0, so there's one at 5, 0, and I have a dot at 1, 0. So I've got a lot of my parabola already drawn. Here's the interesting part. Down the middle is called the axis of symmetry. And it happens to be at x equals 3. It happens to be at x equals 3. And x equals 3 is the equation of that vertical line. Vertical lines are x equals, horizontal lines are y equals. I tend to nag about vertical lines are x equals 3. It happens to be the opposite of that there. If I put zero into that, I will actually get the lowest point. I'll, I'll, sorry, if I put three into that, I get the smallest value of that. Just got distracted there for a second. So let's watch what happens here. If I substitute three, so let's go substitute x equals three, y will equal three, take three squared, take four, and this becomes zero, take four. As I was saying, that becomes the smallest we can make it, and we get y equals minus four. So I put in a three, and I got a minus four. So over here, I've got three and minus four. That's called a min. Three at minus four, a minimum. Look back to the original equation. We call this the turning point form, because the opposite of that will give us a three. That stays the same and gives us minus four and you've got the graph fairly simply drawn from those details there. Again, I've got symmetry, so if I've got this is up at five, I can come across here to five, and I can draw my parabola in there, trying not to have pointy bums, or pointy minimums. Try to smooth the bottom out so you get a nice shape of a parabola. And there's my parabola, which is y equals x minus three squared minus four. So the basic details, that x equal naught gives us that one, that y equals naught gives us those two. This happens to be halfway through in between those two, which happens to be the same as that number there, or actually the opposite of the minus three, and the minus four is how far down it goes. 
One of the other simple rules about trout was they have a one. There's a leading coefficient of one, there's no twos, or anything more complicated. If they were apart by four, it goes down four. And there's other reasons for that, but we'll look at that later. That's enough on that basic graphing of Prabowas. Uh, please, if you've enjoyed it, press like and subscribe. It's really helpful. Thank you.